All righty, good evening. The old clock on the wall says it's 7 o'clock. And the old body feels like it's 10 o'clock. Uh, this time change keeps me messed up. But anyway, it's good to be in the house of God, isn't it? And uh, we're going to get into the Word of God tonight. And uh, the book of Jeremiah here after a while. Uh, but now we're going to sing. Uh, we're going to sing, uh, let's see, what was that number? Okay, it's tell it to Jesus. You have the words on the screen. So let's join together tonight and sing, tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden, tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, have you? sins that to men's eyes are hidden, tell it to Jesus alone, tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, He is a friend that's well known, and you've no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone, do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus are you anxious what shall be tomorrow tell it to Jesus alone tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus he is a friend that's well known you've no other such a friend or brother tell it to Jesus alone are you troubled at the thought of dying tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus for Christ coming kingdom are you sighing tell it to Jesus alone tell it to Jesus Jesus, tell it to Jesus, He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you, God, for another day. Lord, another opportunity, Father, today, together in the house of God, Lord, to come and uh, study your word, sing these great songs, and we just thank you, Lord, for the beautiful day that you blessed us with, the rain that we're receiving tonight, Father. You know everything we need, and you give it to us accordingly. And, Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for these folks that are able to come out to the house of God tonight. And, Lord, bless them, keep them safe. For those that are listening by the way of live stream, we ask you, Lord, to bless them as well. Feed us, Father, at your table tonight. Give us, uh, give us of thy food. Lord, thy precious word, Lord, that we might live closer to thee and walk closer to thee. Help our world tonight, Father, and our nation. It's crying for your, it's crying tonight, Father, this morning. Lord, it needs your help. So, Father, will you touch our people and, Lord, save our lost people. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, now we're going to sing Near the Cross. Near the Cross. So let's sing together. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory. 
glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the Near the cross, a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. Then the bright and morning star sheds its beams around. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the cross, O Lamb of God, bring it seems before me, help me walk from day to day, with its shadows over me, the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the cross I'll watch and wait hoping trusting ever till I reach the golden strand just beyond the shall find rest beyond the river. Amen. Thank you, Kay, for coming back. Thank you. Thank you for helping us tonight. Coming back. She was here this morning. Come back tonight. Thank you for that. Thank you, Sharon, for uh, driving back there in the sound booth. And Debbie and Chad's up there in that cubby hole up there. And they're driving the live stream. So we appreciate all the people helping uh, tonight, helping us to make things go. I need somebody to get me a little bit of water, if they could. Just a, when all this singing and talking i got to do, it'll dry me out real fast. So I appreciate that. All right, anybody need a prayer sheet? Let's see, one thing I want to do before uh, uh, I want to... Um, um, well, let's, let, let me do that in just a minute. Let's go over the uh, a prayer sheet. There is one thing not on the prayer sheet I failed to get on there as the way of announcements. Uh, this coming Monday, we are resuming back to Joy Fellowship meeting. And so you folks that are in Joy Fellowship or eligible for Joy Fellowship, we invite you to come and we'll have a meeting and some dinner. We'll operate things a little bit differently, but we'll still be the same format pretty much. Uh, so we'll have our meeting. And uh, we'll uh, uh, have a meal, and that's Monday at six, at five o'clock. And uh, so, anybody that's Joy Fellowship, will come. We we'll invite you to come. If you're, what's the requirement for Joy Fellowship? Anybody know? 
You must be 50 years old or older, unless you're the pastor. Of course, he, he, of course he's, he's, he's there now, but he wasn't when we first started. But anyway, uh, so anyway, come and join with us. We always have a good time. We, we, re, we get in the Word of God a little bit and uh, sing a little bit and fuss a little bit and uh, uh, just whatever it happens to come up. And we do. I thank you, sir, for that. I appreciate that. So uh, that didn't get on there. So if you're interested, enjoy fellowship. And uh, School of the Bible is tomorrow night. I apologize. Some folks, we didn't get the message out clearly on that. Matter of fact, we didn't. I don't know. If, did I announce that Sunday? I couldn't remember if I did or not. But, but anyway, uh, it, is, um, it is tomorrow night because of a board meeting that Pastor Mason and I attended last night. And I thought it was next week, but uh, I, I never know what's going on. But anyway, it's School of the Bible tomorrow, prayer time. We'll be having that Friday. And uh, so you can come in the house or you can uh, join us live stream. And, of course, our service is on Sunday. Be a praying for all of them uh, as well. Well, today is Veterans Day, and so we thank God for our veterans. So if we got any veterans in the house, I want you to stand for me, okay? Any veterans in the house? If you're a veteran, stand for me tonight. All right, so we got you guys, and guys, I just want to say thank you. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for our freedom. Amen. So amen to that, and we praise God. You know, we live in a, uh, 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 we're still the greatest country in the world. It's got its problems, and the problems are mounting very quickly, and a lot of, a lot of respect is leaving. And as a matter of fact, as we study Jeremiah tonight, we're going to see so much similarities to the world in Jeremiah's day as to the world in our day. And to the world in Jeremiah's day, God brought judgment. Amen. And by the way, the Bible tells me God is the same. He doesn't change. And so judgment is judgment. Amen. So uh, thank you all for your service. And those that's listening tonight, if you serve for our country, God bless you. All right, now your prayer sheet tonight. Uh, Dewey Carr, continue to pray for him in Roanoke. Uh, Renee McKinney, she's still in the hospital. Okay, well, praise the Lord for that. Betty Noble had surgery as well. Betty McKinney came through her surgery today. Did, they, did she have to stay in the hospital? No, she's home. She's home? Well, good. So we thank God for that. Let me give you some prayer requests from this morning. Uh, we've had, uh, I want you to pray for the Barnett family, loss of loved one. Cotton family, Irvin Cotton passed away. His service, I think, was this evening. Uh, so remember the Cotton family uh, tonight. And also the Hall family, remember that family. Loss of a loved one as well. And then I want you to pray, continue to pray for Gail Connor as she's recovering from surgery. Uh, many of you all know Dr. David Wood and June Wood. Uh, I don't know if, how many of you ever met June. June was here one time with David and... Uh, during a revival he had for us. Anyway, uh, June Wood, his wife, is in the hospital with COVID, uh, very ill. Matter of fact, the last message I saw from David was the next, I think, 48 hours is going to be very critical for her. And so uh, uh, we need to pray for June Wood. Also, David has the COVID virus too, but he is asymptomatic. He said he's showing no symptoms at all. So uh, let's remember that David and June Wood uh, tonight. Uh, then these were given also this morning. Henry Woods, pray for that need. Hester Noble, pray for that need. Um, and uh, Teresa Vi, you can write these down and pray for them. And uh, Cleve Rife, remember that, remember this need tonight. And Joseph Carter, pray for him and his eye uh, that uh, he doesn't lose his eye. He's going to have to have some more surgery on it. So let's remember him. Also, we need to pray for Colin Lilly. I was told that he is scheduled for a heart surgery on Monday, this coming Monday, uh, at Roanoke. That's open heart surgery. So let's pray for uh, Cole and Lily uh, tonight in our prayers as well. Okay, anybody else with a prayer request in the house tonight? Pastor, I talked to you yesterday with uh, uh, Don Hayes. Yes. Therapist and got some problems with her shoulder. Not... Okay, let's pray for John and Carol Tabor. Tonight. Uh, 
Jerry Ray. Okay, so Jerry Ray and Brenda Oxley. Okay. Ashley Watson. Ashlyn, sorry. Ashlyn Watson. Okay. Lisa. Lisa Stanley. Stanley. Oh, I just remember Lisa Stanley tonight. David Stouffer. David Stouffer. Okay. So let's pray. For, you're talking about Oscar and Carolyn Justice. Let's pray for Oscar and Carolyn Justice. Anybody else? Well, of course, remember our nation. Our uh, nation's in, uh, well, just in a really turmoil right now. We're living in a split nation, and so we need to pray for it, pray for the leadership, and pray for your local church, and uh, just pray for each other. We continue to pray for Israel, as um, a lot of things are going to begin to happen that pertains to the nation of Israel. Yeah, they are. We've already heard talk of that, and uh, so, uh, and when you go to messing with Israel, you go to messing with the wrong bunch. Amen. <laughs> That's the truth. And so uh, we need to pray for Israel uh, through all of this as well. And let's just pray for lost sinners. People need to be saved while there's still time to be saved. Let's bring our lost people to the throne of God. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And let's pray for these requests. And thank God for his watch care and protection over us. And uh, remember uh, each other tonight. Our Father which art in heaven... O oh God, as we gather in your holy place of worship again, we thank you, God, for this night. We thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord, to come into the house of God. Lord, to study your precious word, to feed our souls at the table of God. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, we have a place where we can gather. We have a place where we know that you will gather with us, Lord, as you said in your word, that you would gather with us every time we gather. So, Lord, we welcome you tonight, and we thank you, Lord, for being here. We thank you for giving us safety to be here. We thank you, God, for protection you've granted to us, Lord, of this past week. You've watched over us and took care of us. You met our needs. Father, we praise your name for that. Lord, we couldn't do it ourselves. We'd be in trouble, Father, if it wasn't for your guiding hand. So, Lord, thank you again for watching over us and loving us and caring for us, Lord, as only you can. Thank you for these that are gathered in the house tonight. Pray a blessing upon them. Thank you, Lord, for those listening to us at home by the way of live stream. We pray for them. Tonight, Lord, that you'll be with them and feed their souls as well. Lord, at the table of God, as they get their Bible and get ready to dig into the Word of God, I pray, Father, that they'll be fed and their soul will be lifted up. Uh, Father, uh, uh, and you'll just give us that peace. Lord, I, I'm thankful tonight for peace that can only come through the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace, Father, that cannot be found in the world. Peace that cannot be found in the media. Peace that cannot be found in people. But, oh, it's peace. Oh, peace, peace, peace. Wonderful peace that comes from Father, comes from you. Thank you for that, Lord. And we can go home tonight and lay our head in our pillows and rest, knowing that all things is in the hand of God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for that sweet spirit. Father, I pray for people tonight that don't have that. I pray for lost people. Lord, who's putting their dependence on the world, who's putting their dependence on a world system. Dear God, help them, Father, realize their hope is built in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. To keep us, Lord, near the cross as we sung tonight. Lord, that our faith may not waver, but be stronger the further we go. And Lord, I pray for the church, and I thank you for meeting the needs of the church. And Lord, I pray for, Lord, our services coming up, Father, this weekend. You'll bless them, God. Help us, Lord, to honor you in some way as we teach the word of God and sing the songs. And may we praise you, Lord, for uh, all that you've done. 
Lord, thank you for this nation, God. We thank you for our veterans, Lord, and those that have fought and died for this country. Lord, I just pray for those. Lord, give them peace tonight. I pray for a people in this nation that has lost respect for that. Lord, will you instill in their hearts to realize because of people willing uh, to stand in the front lines, we can sit here tonight in peace and comfort. And Lord, I pray, uh, Father, for even a leadership of our nation who's forgotten that. I pray, Father God, you'll deal, Lord, with uh, people. And those, Father, that you're putting in places, Father, some we agree with, some we don't. But, Father, our, our, our job is to pray for them. And, Father, I pray for every single one of them, most, most of all, that they might be saved. And, Lord, I pray for lost people, those on our prayer list, those in our hearts tonight, Lord, that they might be saved. And, Father, I pray for these needs we've mentioned here tonight. I pray for Dewey Carr in the hospital. Thankful he's doing well. Pray for Renee McKinney, Lord, and, and for Betty Noble, Lord, as they recover from surgery. Thank you for things being well with Betty McKinney tonight. And Father, we pray for Gail Connor. She continues to recover from surgery. And for uh, David and June Wood, that you'll be with them fighting this COVID virus. For Henry Woods and Hester Noble and their needs tonight. We pray for John and Carol Tabor, Lord, as, as they're fighting pain in his shoulder. And Lord, I pray you'll help them. For Jerry Ray, we pray for him tonight. And for Brenda Oxley fighting cancer. Pray for Sharon tonight fighting cancer. Lord, I pray for Ashlyn Watson and that need tonight for uh, Lisa Stanley, Lord, and that need. And pray for Oscar and Carolyn. Lord, you'll help Carolyn, Father. Lord, strengthen her tonight. And for David Stoffer and his family, his wife. Lord, help him tonight, Lord. Help with him, Lord. Get settled in his mind, Father, we pray. And we pray for these families that's lost their loved ones. I continue to pray for Jonathan Cantrell's family, and for the Hall family, and for the Cotton family, and Barnett family. These have suffered loss here recently. We ask God for your comfort upon them. For Teresa Vi, we pray for her tonight. And for Cleve Rife, pray for Joseph, Father, in his eye. We pray, Father, you not allow him to lose his, that he won't lose his sight in that eye. Father, we pray for healing. Pray for Colin, Lord, as he gets ready for surgery this coming week. Open heart surgery. We ask you, Lord, to be with him. Lord, it all go well and he'll have a quick recovery. Lord, God, help us tonight as we study your word. We want to do things pleasing unto thee. Help us find in the scripture that, that will help us. Lord, to draw near to Thee. Forgive us, Father, of our sin. Draw us close to Thee. Help us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Okay, in your Bible tonight, we're in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter number 7. We, uh, we covered... Uh, uh, Part of, well, a whole lot of this chapter last time. Uh, we were down to verse 21. We're just going to quickly go back and touch on a few things. And I'll do you like I did this morning. I'll give you a little quiz. Uh, see if you remember what we talked about last week. Quiz time. Didn't, didn't you like quizzes when you went to school? Them kids I have in my class, I, I, you know, I give them a, quiz, a weekly quiz. They get a weekly quiz. And most of my quiz is only five questions, so you ain't got much room for error. Uh, and they're like, oh, Pastor, why are we going to have quizzes? This quiz is so hard. Uh, I said, no, it ain't. It's not hard. But be careful. Don't miss any. Because, you know, if you've got five questions, you miss one, you're already tumbling low on the token pole. Amen. And if they cry long enough, most of them I give them the answer. But, but. And, you know, and let me tell you what I do for them. Maybe I ain't supposed to tell this, but, but I give it to them. In, they take it online, but they, but they can take it in class. And I'll say, you can even help each other. Just t tell each other, help each other. And they still miss them. Uh, you see? But anyway, uh, quiz time. Uh, pertaining to chapter number 7. And uh, chapter 7 through 10, uh, verse 20, uh, to chapter 10. Which message was this of Jeremiah? First, second, or third? It was the third message of Jeremiah. Matter of fact, we be, he begins the third message, his third message there uh, uh, of Jeremiah's. Now, um, where was he preaching this, these messages? you remember? At the temple gate. They're called the temple sermons. 
because he will preach them at the temple gate at a very busy time in Jerusalem. It's one of the feast time. We're not for sure which one it is, but it's one of the feast time when everybody's in Jerusalem and everybody's coming for the, the feast. And, and uh, so it's very crowded, lots of people. And Jeremiah is going to proclaim this from the uh, temple gate. Now, uh, which king was reigning when he preached these when he preached these temple sermons, you remember which one of the kings was reigning at that time? Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim. King Jehoiakim. Je- King Jehoiakim will reign for 11 years uh, in uh, Jerusalem, in Judah. And uh, he'll, he'll be the king. Is he a good king or bad king? He is no good. He is a bad king. There was only one of them kings good in Jeremiah's time. Which one was he? Josiah. Josiah. We'll talk a little bit about Josiah tonight. But the time of Josiah has passed. Jehoiakim is now the king. And Jeremiah and and things are a mess. Now there's so much similarities to our world today. Because if you don't think our world's in a mess, then I don't know where you've been living. Uh, Because we're in a mess. And such, so much immorality and immorality coming down the road. Uh, I mean, at a rapid pace. If things stay on track like they are, immorality is going to take over this nation. And, uh, and so we see so much similarities going on here. And so uh, this is during the reign of King Jehoiakim. Now, if you remember chapter 7 and down through chapter uh, verse 17 of chapter 8, he's dealing with Israel's superstitious faith, surface faith. Not, not, it's not in their heart. It's superficial. You remember the chant they were making, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. They were, they were stuck in rituals. You see, they had no heart religion. They had uh, head religion, uh, and they were stuck in rituals, but they were living like the devil, you see. They wanted God to hang around and they wanted God to stay nearby. But we want all these other gods, you see, uh, also to be part of our game play and all that stuff. Well, it didn't work. It doesn't work. So much of that going on in our world today, it doesn't work. You see, God does not share his glory with anybody else or anything else. Now, having done all that, let's... let's Let's journey down now. I do want to reread, starting in verse 17, down through 21, to catch us up sort of to where we were as we pick up uh, verse 21. It is my hope tonight to clear through verse 3 of chapter 8 because all this goes together. And so we're going to move right through it here uh, tonight. So uh, verse 17, as, as a means of review, let's read 17 down through 20, 221. Uh, Verse 17, seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? He's speaking to Jeremiah now. You see what they're doing in the streets, Jeremiah? All right. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. You remember who who the queen of heaven was? It was the fertility God. Uh, And uh, uh, okay, it's, it's... it says, and knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. In other words, the whole family done got involved. Mom and dad and the children, the children were gathering the wood and dad was building the fire and mom was kneading the dough to make an offering to the false god. You know, not the god, but the false god of that day. They were worshiping the false god. Now, not just mom and dad, but they were teaching the children Amen? To do the same, to honor. By the way, what's happening today? Mom and dad's teaching kids today to honor everything but God. To get involved in everything but God. You know, it's, it, God's not important. Let's, let's, let's get all we can out of this world. And we see the product of that now. We see how things is going. I can't get hung up in this. I got a long way to go. All right. Verse 19, do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, 
upon man, upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. In other words, judgment is coming. Now let's jump into verse 21. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings under your sacrifices and eat flesh. Now we just briefly touched on this last Wednesday night. And basically here's what he's saying. Uh, now you understand about sacrifice. God had originally pur uh, purposed for the sacrifices to be a service of the heart. Their sacrifices was brought because their heart was right. Amen. Uh, they didn't bring sacrifices out of habit. They didn't bring it out of because they had to. They brought it because they loved the Lord. And they brought it because that was from the heart. It was a sacrifice from the heart, you see. And so God originally meant for the sacrifices to be a product of the heart. But now they have made it an act of a ritual. And here's what he's saying in this verse. He is saying you might as well take your sacrifices and eat them. They'll do you more good for you to eat them than to present them to me because your heart's not right with me. You know, they, they, it, was against, it was against God's order for them to eat meats offered unto idol, uh, I mean, unto sac as a sacrifice. Uh, but, at the, but he said, you might as well take them and eat them because it's going to do you more good than the sacrifice is going to do you. Matter of fact, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22, the Bible says this, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Here's what he said. Behold, to obey is what? Better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. God is pleased with our heart. You see. Verse 22 for I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. It was not the sacrifices that I spoke to your fathers about concerning my worship. It was their heart condition I spoke to them about. God wanted their heart to be right with Him. If their heart was right with Him, then the sacrifice would be a product of that, you see. Verse 23, But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Uh, here's, what, here's what God commanded them. This was God's commandment. Obey my voice, and I will be your God. Uh, walk with my ways, and uh, in the ways that I have commanded you. Now, let me tell you something about these people. They, they should have known exactly what God had said. They were without excuse not to know what God had said. They knew what, they knew what Moses had said. And by the way, how much time had Moses spent in, uh, teaching them to obey the Lord? I mean, we're going to read some of them here in just a minute. Moses, time after time after time, would tell them, this is what God wants from you. God wants your obedience. God wants you to obey His voice. God wants you to listen to Him. God wants you to do as He commands you to do. Hold your place there and go back with me in the book of Deuteronomy. We're going to look at chapter number 6. We're going to read a few of these tonight out of the book of Deuteronomy because this is Moses. He's the writer here. And we'll see the command that Moses gives to them. It's a command of God's. In, in chapter 6, and begin at verse 1, the Bible says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear... Uh, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, 
and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on the gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. Here's a command, you see. The command of Moses is to be a hard thing. Amen. Serve the Lord with all thy soul and might and heart and all those things. Now let's turn over to chapter 10. Now if you were here Sunday night, I preached from this passage of scripture Sunday night. In Deuteronomy 10, beginning in verse 12, it says, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, and to walk in all thy ways, to love him, to serve the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also and all that therein is. Honor the Lord hath the delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is a God of gods, and the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger, and giveth him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. And then just a few, I want to read just a few out of chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments always. Now skip down to verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if he shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul. And then verse 22. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to cleave unto him. You see, they should have known what God wanted from them. You see, they were taught it continuously. Uh, but here's, here's the thing. Uh, they, they wouldn't listen. They would not hearken. Let's look at verse 24. It says, since the day, we're back to our text now in verse 24. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Here's what God's telling them through Jeremiah. Ever since this began, ever since the day of your fathers, even to right now, I have not failed to send men your way, to teach you the right way and to give you the right thing so you'll know what the Lord requires of you. Amen? That's what he's saying. But here's the thing, they wouldn't listen, you see. By the way, in 2020, God still has people uh, uh, still proclaiming what the Word of God says. Still, God still sending people out there to tell the truth. But just like them, today they don't want it. You see, they don't want to hear it. Verse twenty-five. Oh, I'm sorry, twenty-six. Verse twenty-six. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Look here, look at what they did. They're in worse shape than their fathers were. You see, he, he literally said they've done worse than their fathers did. Now, verse 27 through 28 and 28. Therefore, here's what he says. Now, what, we see therefore, what we do? So what's therefore? In other words, it's because of this kind of thing. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them. He's speaking to Jeremiah now. But look here. But they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Jeremiah, you preach it, 
You tell them what I tell you to tell them, but they're not going to listen to you. They don't want to hear it. They're so full of lies, they don't know what's right themselves. Amen. For it says, in the truth is perished. They can't speak the truth. It is cut off from their mouth. Can I tell you about a world we live in today? It's hard to find truth. Amen. Everything you hear, most of the time, especially if you're watching the news, or the media of any sort, you better not believe what's flying across that screen. Amen. It's so full of corruption, so full of lies, so full of hate, and they're leading people to hate people. You see, uh, we see, we can almost see, but back in Jeremiah's day, they didn't have uh, NBC and CNN, all of them flying in flames. Amen. You see, but they had hatred. And they, 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 the same thing we see brewing in our world today. There is no truth. The truth is perished. And when they speak the truth, well, they want to delete it. Or they want to erase it. Or they want to quieten it down. Amen. Am I not telling it like it is? You see? Uh, they don't want the truth. They want their truth. And their truth is full of lies. You see? The same thing Jer uh, God is telling Jeremiah is going on in his day. The truth is perished. It's not found in their mouth. It's cut off from their mouth. If they speak, they're speaking a lie. You'll see. So, as we get into uh, chapter 29 through the end of the chapter now, he's going to talk about terrible days coming. Because of their choice and because of their conduct, conduct and because of the way they're treating God and treating God's house and, and all these things, uh, there's a payday. you see. Listen, we're not going to... I just wonder how long a nation's going to get by desecrating God the way it is. I'm talking about our nation. The nation that God is so blessed and so wonderfully given what he's given to us and how he's blessed us. How long is he, is, is, are we going to be allowed to desecrate him and his house and his salvation and his grace? You'll see. Beginning in verse 29. What it says, cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away. Take up a lamentation on high places. For the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. This cutting off of the hair and casting it away is a sign of mourning. In other words, it's time to mourn. I wonder how many... I wonder how many of us tonight or, or Christians all over the, the United States is mourning for our own country. Because it's time to mourn for our nation. Amen. We need to mourn for what is happening in our nation. And so he's, he's signifying a time of mourning. Now two things here that God is calling them to mourn over. Number one, he's going to tell them to mourn over the conduct of it's going on in the temple. In other words, how they're treating the house of God. They need to mourn over that. And second of all, they need to mourn because of the high places and the valley of Hinnom that he'll mention just in a minute. He'll mention Tophet and he'll mention the valley of Hinnom and the things that were going on there and, and the sacrifices and all those things that were taking place. He's saying it's there to mourn over, you see. Now, let's come to verse 30. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. Now can I tell you he's making reference here to the temple. Now Jeremiah is preaching from the temple gate. And inside the temple is corruption, immorality, idol worship. It's taking place in the very place that God had put his name there. You see, uh, matter of fact, if you, uh, if, if you remember when we started the study of the book of Jeremiah, I gave you some homework, and that was to go read 2 Kings, beginning chapter 21, through about 24, 25. You were to read that, and if you would have read that, then you would have found out that these abominations in the temple started back with King Manasseh. Actually, it would have went back probably to Ahaz, but it was brought to full fruition in, uh, 
with King Manasseh in chapter 21. Flip back with me to 2 Kings just a moment. Chapter 21. And look here what happens and what begins to take place. This is King Manasseh, Hezekiah's son. And in 2 Kings 21, and verse 1, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hezbollah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Here's what he done. For he built up the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove as did Ahab, uh, king of Israel. And worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. Now notice verse 4. And he built altars in the house of the Lord. Of which the Lord said in Jerusalem, I will I put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his sons pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil then did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. This, this, this desecration of the house of God began back here in, in Manasseh's day. It was brought on by Ahab, but it came to full length here with Manasseh's. When they're bringing in these idol worships and altars are being built in the house of God to the false gods, you see. Now, if you remember, a little bit later, along will come a king by the name of Josiah. And you can read that in 2 Kings chapter 23. Along will come Josiah, and he's a good king. He's eight years old when he begins to reign. He becomes a good king. And what does he do to all these idols, to all these altars? What does he do to them? You remember? Smashes them. He grinds them to dust. Throws them into Kedron Valley. You remember? He gets rid of them cleans out the house of God. They find the, they find the book of the law there and, and they clean it out and he straightens all that up. However, the sad part of it is uh, by this time, Jehoiakim is reigning and they're right back at it, you see. They got right back in to this idol worship. Notice verse 31 and here's, here's the sad thing of what's going on here. Um, let's see. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Now, let me give you some uh, things to understand here. Uh, the word Tophet. Now, uh, the word Tophet was a place of fire. And this place of fire is where they would burn incense to their false gods. The high places mentioned were the places of idol worship. Tophet was a place of fire. Now, here's what they were doing. They were offering sacrifices at Tophet to the false gods, and the sacrifice they were offering was their own babies. They were burning their own sons and daughters in, in this fire as a sacrifice to a false god, you see. And they were sacrificing their own children uh, as the sacrifice. And this Tophet uh, was located in, in what's called the Valley of Hinnom. Now this Valley of Hinnom was a valley, deep and narrow ravine with steep rocky sides located southwest of Jerusalem. It separated Mount Zion to the north from the Hill of Evil Council and the sloping rocky plateau of the plain of Rephim to the south. It was in this valley of Hinnom 
uh, where they would sacrifice their children to false gods. And uh, if you studied that out, and you could do a lot of study on the Valley of Hinnom, you get into Gehenna. You know, in Jerusalem had that place where the fire always burned, where they dumped their bodies, and uh, where they would burn them. You see, this is this Valley of Hinnom. And uh, there, here, the children of Israel were sacrificing their own children uh, to false gods. Now, we sit here today, and, and we say, oh, my goodness, that's an awful thing. And it is an awful thing. It's an awful thing to be so engrossed in a false God that it would lead you to destroy your own babies. But let's jump to 2020 and you tell me what's going on with our babies. We may not be throwing them in a fire. Well, they probably do. That's probably where they end up. Murder. We're taking babies out of mother's wombs and some even right after they've been born and we're killing them and murdering them and we're sacrificing our children. Amen. What's the difference? We're sacrificing our children and they're calling it okay. And they're calling it your right to do. You see, do you think God smiles upon that? No, sir. He didn't smile upon this. In 2020, he's not smiling upon babies dying at the hands of somebody else and our leadership saying, oh, that's a right they have. They ain't got no right. You see? And we wonder, you know, I wonder sometimes how long is God going to put up with this mockery before he calls an end to this mess? Amen? Well, you know, I know God's merciful and he's gracious, but you look here what went on in these days. God called, called it quits. God said, it's done, it's over. Jeremiah, don't pray for him no more. Lord, Lord, I, I hope God never says don't pray for us anymore. Amen. You see, the things that was going on, displeasing unto, the, unto God. Let's go now to verse 32. Therefore, there's that therefore again, because all this is going on, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnon, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. Because of this, he says, it'll no longer be known as the valley of Hinnon or Tophet. It's going to be known as the valley of slaughter. Why? Because uh, the coming army is going to so invade and so destroy. There's going to be so many dead you can't bury them. There's not going to be a place to bury them or nobody to bury them. You see, this slaughter is going to be of, so, of such magnitude. Notice verse 33. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth and none shall fray them away. In other words, what he's saying, the vultures and the meat-eating animals are going to have a, they're going to have a smorgasbord. Amen. They're going to have carcasses to live off of and feast off of. They're going to be fat off of the dead flesh. This reminds me of in the book of Revelation, and it's coming up in the bold judgments. I'm pretty well sure. Where what 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 that when the angels is going to cry to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the earth to come and feast on the kings. Come and feast on them because their carcasses are going to lay, you see, in the great destruction that's coming to this world. They're going to invite the animals to come and feast, you see. Here, uh, Jeremiah's telling them uh, that, you know, you're going to be so many destroyed. The animals are going to feast on you. You can't bury them because of the destruction. And notice what else says in verse 33. And there'll be no one to fray them away or to run them off or to scare them off. You remember Abraham, when, when God told Abraham to take those animals and cut them in half, you remember? And they walked through those carcasses and, and God made a covenant with him. Remember what, you remember the Bible says Abraham had to, had to shoo away uh, the birds or the vultures because they were trying to eat the, the animals. There ain't going to be nobody to do that here, you see. Be nobody to fray them away. 
Now let's look at verse 34. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of the Jerusalem the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. All joy, all singing, all laughing will be gone. I do, and I believe this, the day is coming to this earth when the same thing is going to happen. All the singing is going to be gone. All the rejoicing is going to be gone. When the people of God leave, the singing leaves. Amen. Why do you think they don't want to sing today? We're too happy. We're too happy in our singing. So let's don't let them sing. Let me tell you something, sing on. They'll come a time, don't worry about it. You guys that don't like it, they'll come a day when the singing will be gone from this earth. Amen. And you won't have no more rejoicing and no more singing. You see. Verse 8, we need to go through the uh, uh, first three verses because it ties in to these uh, chapter 7. So in chapter 8, the first three verses is a continuation of chapter 7. Look at verse 1. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of his pre, of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. Now this coming army not only is going to, going to destroy those that are alive, but they're going to dig up the bones of the kings and the prophets and the priests and they're going to lay them out on the ground. You'll see. Um, they're going to uh, desecrate the graves of the kings and the princes and the priests and the prophets. And all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they're going to dig their bones up. They're going to spread them out on the ground. Notice verse 2. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the hosts of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served, after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor buried but shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. In other words, the sun and the moon and the stars that they had put all their faith in and the worship of the planets, which started back with Ahab and, and, and all these things that they had put their trust in. Now they're going to lay all the bones out of these priests and prophets and kings and, and let them see what the sun, moon, and stars are going to do for them. Nothing. What does it say? They shall be dung. Upon the face of the earth. It's not going to be like Elijah when he showed up in the valley of dry bones. Amen. Because when Elijah, uh, uh, not Elijah, uh, Ezekiel. When Ezekiel showed up in the valley of dry bones, you see what happened. Uh, it wasn't the sun, moon, and stars. It was God. God was in charge. And, and uh, uh, can these bones live? And boy, what happened? Shake, rattle, and roll. Amen. Here they come. They started coming together. You see, because they were out before Almighty God. These are put out to the false god. And you know what's going to happen to them? They're going to lay on the ground as dumb. Nothing. Finally, verse 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the palaces, places, whether I have driven them, saith the Lord. There's going to come a time when it would be better to die than to live. I believe we're heading in our nation almost at that time. You see, when to live is going to be trouble. You see, I hate to say it of our great nation, but if we continue on the path we're on, we're heading for a quick downfall. Amen. We're going to fall about as quick as the boats climbed in, in the election. Amen. Amen. We're headed for a fall. Now, God is still gracious and God is still merciful. What is our job but to pray for this nation? Pray for justice to be served, for God to get the glory, and for a nation to turn back to God before, before it's too late. And so we need to be praying. I believe to me, as I, as I study these chapters, I see our world so plain and clear. And the things that was happening then is happening today, and we know what God did. Amen. And so we need to be people busy praying, seeking God's favor, and seeking His face. Now we'll pick up in, in verse 4, and um, 
we'll get down to the end of the chapter and probably next week and maybe a little further uh, on, on into this chapter. But we're still into these uh, temple sermons and uh, this is some pretty tough stuff to be preaching from the gate of the temple, wasn't it? At this time. <laughs> and we know they don't like Jeremiah. God told them, he ain't going to listen to you. They ain't going to like you. Uh, but you preach anyway. Amen. And that's what he done. All righty, well, appreciate you taking time to be here and time to listen. Hope it's helpful. Uh, as we study these books, it is a difficult book to understand. But I believe God gives us what we need to help us. Uh, help us in our study of the Word of God. All right, let's stand to be dismissed tonight. Heavenly Father, it's been a sweet spirit tonight in the house of God as, as we study your Word. And Lord, as we see the condition of the world then, we see the condition of the world now. And Father, we ask you to have mercy on us. We ask you, Lord, to forgive our nation of their sin. And Lord, help them turn around. Help us, God, be busy praying that you'll turn things around, Father, to bring you glory not this whole wicked world. And Father, forgive us for not praying. Forgive us, God, for being caught up in the, in the rhetoric of this world. But help us, Lord, to get in your word and be faithful to what you've told us. Bless these that are here tonight. Give them safety as they go home. Lord, bring us back here at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to give the orphanage. Wondrous revelation.